Let's build 15 more shortcuts that you requested. Some automations for scanning NFC tags. Create alarms based on your work schedule. Automatically send text messages to your clients. Automatically move photos of your dog to a shared album. Read your incoming text messages out loud. And I'd like to start a new segment of the shortcuts videos, which is highlighting shortcuts that you all have built. So this first shortcut is combining photos into a grid and it's from viewer Blake Feely. He sent me this shortcut via DM. He really built out a nice shortcut to select multiple photos and make it into a nice grid. So when you run this shortcut, I'm gonna select multiple images here. You can do as many as you would like. It'll choose how you want them to be arranged in a grid, horizontally or vertically. I've been using the horizontally, especially for screenshots. But if I choose in a grid, now it's gonna put all four of those photos in a tight grid. It'll show you a preview. Then you can choose where you wanna save it. Quick save will go right to the camera roll. And a nice little confirmation there too. Photo has been saved. And that's what the photo grid looks like after it's run. Links to this shortcut from Blake will be down in the description along with everything else you see today. All right, number two, I've had a questions about NFC tags and some ideas on how to use them in automations. If you didn't know, you can go to the automations tab here in shortcuts, tap the plus button, and NFC is actually a trigger. You can actually get NFC tags that are like stickers. That's what these are right here. You can put them on the back of your phone case, in a bag, on your desk or wherever, and you can program these to do different things. So a simple option will be, let's scan this NFC tag. Just hold the top of the phone directly to the NFC tag and you'll see it scans. You can name the tag. Let's call this tag nightstand for now. We want this automation to run immediately. Don't notify me. We'll do a new blank automation and we can choose control home right here. And remember in iOS 18, you'll be able to tog HomeKit devices, but we can just choose a scene. Like I'll choose my good night scene, hit next. And now whenever I scan that NFC tag with my iPhone, it's gonna run my smart home good night scene to turn off all the lights. Number three, another idea for an NFC tag is things you normally buy via groceries or maybe it's toilet paper, something you have to do pretty often. I'm gonna scan another NFC tag and let's call this paper towels. We want this to run immediately. We'll go to next. We'll start a new blank automation and I'm gonna search for create a reminder. I'm gonna choose add new reminder. I'm gonna title that reminder, paper towels. And then we're gonna add that. You could do this to your grocery list or a different list you have in here. I'm gonna do it to my shortcuts list. You can choose to do an alert or no alert. You can expand that menu and then have a bunch of other options here, even adding notes to the reminder. We're gonna use that in a future shortcut in this video. And now let's just hit done. Now, when I scan that NFC tag, you'll see the little notification. I turned it on so we could see that. It's running the automation, which adds it to my reminders. And if I go to that list, I actually was testing multiple scans and turns out it worked every time. It'll add that item to the reminders list. And another idea is when you scan an NFC tag, you can have it start playing music. We can choose the play music command. You can choose a playlist, an album, or whatever you'd like from your Apple Music library. Spotify still doesn't have actions for shortcuts, unfortunately. And then you can add a change playback destination action. If you wanna send that music to an AirPlay 2 speaker, your Sonos system, HomePod, or anything like that. All right, this next request was they want a notification when your phone is done charging. Now to do that, we will need a third-party app called Push Cuts. You don't have to do the in-app purchase or upgrade for this particular action. This is actually where I set up notifications for things like HomeKit, like if a door is left open, because it's not really built in yet. I'm gonna add a new notification here in Push Cuts, and it's only gonna say phone is charged. That's all I need to do. I'll tap add. And now I have a URL that I can use in a shortcut. I'll copy that URL right here. Then when I go over to automations, I can create a new automation. For that, we can scroll down and go to battery level. We could say when battery level equals 100%, so fully charged. We want this to run immediately. Don't notify when run. We'll hit next. We'll do a new blank shortcut. And the reason why we're doing it via push cuts and not just a built-in notification here is your phone is probably charging in another room. Now you can add one action like speak text and it can just say out loud that your phone is charged. But using push cuts, we can actually have this shortcut set up on something like our iPad and then we'll get that notification on that device even when the phone is actually charged. We're gonna use the get contents of URL action. We'll paste the URL we got from push cuts and now we're gonna get a notification when our battery level reaches 100 and we can create this automation on something like our iPad so we're notified there once the phone is charged. Next, someone wants to enable low power mode at 9 p.m. every day, but only if they're home. You can create this in the automations tab, but I'm gonna make this a shortcut so you can download it, and then you would create an automation for 9 p.m. as time of day. Like we've done before, we're gonna get current location and then add an if statement. And remember, for current location, tap in there and you can choose what you'd like. I would actually do street address if you wanna be precise to your actual home. I'm gonna choose city. So if city is not, and then maybe put in your home city or your street address, so if you're anywhere but your home address, 
I'm gonna put in Tampa there because I'm not in Tampa right now. So this is gonna run for me automatically. I'll do low power mode. This is turn low power mode on. So now if I create the automation that runs at 9 p.m. every day, it's gonna get my location. And if my current city is not my home city or your home street address, then it's gonna turn low power mode on. If I run this to test, you can see low power mode was just turned on right there. Next, someone asking if they can download an MP3 from like a podcast or RSS feed here in Shortcuts. You can do that, the shortcut is a little lengthy, so I'll just put this in the description below. But if you put the RSS feed for the podcast you want, right there at Primary Technology, my tech podcast with Jason Aiton, you should totally listen. Links are down in the description. You can also do a choose from menu and have multiple podcasts to choose from, but this is gonna get the latest episode and then save that MP3 file to your folder of choice. Right here, I have it set to save to on my iPhone folder in the Files app, but you can change that to whatever folder you would like, even the desktop so it syncs via iCloud. And it's gonna save that latest episode MP3 file to that folder. The next request was this person gets tax receipts via email all the time and wants to save it to a specific folder. They said it can just be a screenshot of it. So what I've created here is a simple shortcut. All it does is take a screenshot and then saves it to a specific file folder on my iPhone. Now this will be most useful if you map it to something like the action button or the back tap on the iPhone. You don't have to have the action button for it. I'm gonna program that shortcut to my action button just as an example here. But now let's say you're looking at an email here. We'll assume that this is a tax receipt. I'll hit the action button. You'll see it took a screenshot and it actually automatically saved it to that folder of my choice. This is the testing folder. And you can see image two right here is the screenshot that I just took. Now, if you want to get fancy, you can also add a rename file, get current date, and then add the date to the file name before it gets saved. And the nice thing about doing it this way is that screenshot is not going to be in your photo library. If you're like me, you probably have a bunch of screenshots already, and you'll see that screenshot was not saved. So it's another advantage of running it through a shortcut. I love this next shortcut idea. This person is a locksmith, and they wanted to be able to send a message to that last client automatically just by copy and pasting their phone number. So what I've done here is create a shortcut that will be in the share menu. This way you can access it directly without copy and pasting. But if you don't wanna do the share menu, it'll still get your clipboard automatically. This way you can copy the phone number and then run the shortcut. I have an automated text here saying, appreciate your business. You can change the text if you'd like. And then it's gonna send that text to the phone number that you shared or copied. So if you're looking at a phone number like this here, I can select it and I can just hit the share button right here. You'll see the shortcut that I created Thank you text, I can just tap it here from the share sheet. And now it's automatically gonna populate a text to that phone number and I can just send it. You can also expand this action here and toggle off show and run and it'll just send it automatically without you having to confirm it. Next, this person wanted to be able to detect whether a VPN was active on their phone and then toggle it. So if it's off, toggle it on. If it's on, toggle it off. Well, for that, Toolbox Pro actually has an action and that can actually pull whether or not a VPN is connected. So that as the first action, check if VPN is connected. And then I chose if name is no. And remember, you can tap on an action there and it brings up other options. It was originally on number, I changed it to name. If the answer is no, then connect to VPN. And here you'll have to select your VPN if you have one installed, I don't have one here. Otherwise, do nothing. Now this VPN action here is actually built into shortcuts and you could just do a toggle VPN so if you just want a straight toggle, you can just use that one action and that's all you need. But this will actually check whether or not it's on and then manually change it on or off. And if I duplicate that action and instead of connect, I can choose disconnect from VPN. And now it's gonna toggle to connect or disconnect depending on the current state of your VPN. All right, this next person said they have to put out flags for their dad's business on a pretty regular schedule whenever there's certain holidays and things like that. So I created this shortcut and you will need to have a calendar with all the events set up. Now you can use something like a stock US holidays calendar, which is built into iCloud and certain Google accounts, or just create a calendar on your device that has all these dates set. And what this shortcut does is it will get whatever calendar events are for the next day. And I have here the US holidays day. And if there's any event on that particular calendar, it's gonna add a reminder that says set up flags at 9 a.m. And it's also going to create an alarm to wake you up an hour before that. And it's gonna label that alarm flags with an exclamation point. That's why I said it like that. Then what you would do is create an automation in the automations tab to run this shortcut every night at 11 p.m. It'll check that calendar for events. And if there is one where you have to set out the flags, it'll create that reminder and alarm for you. I thought this next request was pretty cool too. This person wants to add any photos they take of their dog to a specific shared album. 
Well, what you can do is, I have this shortcut starting with a Get Latest Photos action. Depending on how often you want this to run, you might want to change that to 5 photos or 10 photos. You'll need to experiment. But what this does is, it'll get that many photos, repeat this next process with each photo. And the first one is another Toolbox Pro action, which is recognize objects in that repeat item. It's going to make that object into a text block so I can use it in an if statement. And if the picture contains a dog, then you can add a add to album action down here. Now I have a quick look action right here because I wanted to show you what it actually does. You'll see right now I actually have a dog back as my fifth photo. So I have this getting the last seven photos. And if in any of those photos it recognizes a golden retriever, which just to give you an idea, this is actually my seventh photo right here. Then it's going to show me that photo in the quick look. So I'm going to run this shortcut. Turns out it will recognize there's a golden retriever in one of the photos and showed it to me in quick look. So we know this shortcut can actually recognize photos of dogs. Now what I've noticed is this Toolbox Pro action actually gives you the dog breed. It doesn't just say dog. So you might need to find out what it actually tells you. You can actually put this quick look under the text block here. This way you can see what name it's going to be returning for pictures of your dog. And then instead of a quick look, you can add a save to photo album, put that right above the otherwise section, and then you can save that photo to the recents. And the variable you're going to select is actually the repeat item. That's going to be the photo that it recognized. So save that repeat item to and then choose one of your albums. Then you can create an automation where this runs every day, once a week. Depends how often you take photos of your dog. If you think you're in like the, I take 50 photos a week and maybe 10 of them are my dog, I would have this run once every Saturday, get the last 50 photos, and then whichever ones get recognized with your dog breed, add it to that specific album. All right, this next automation was when you get a text from a certain person, unfortunately you do have to choose at least one contact. It doesn't work with just text from anyone, but you can choose when you get text from a certain person, you don't have to specify when the message contains anything, so just leave that blank, and then run immediately. And what this action is going to do is, it's actually going to check the time of day. This person wanted this only to happen for certain times of day. And so if current date contains PM, and you can see I formatted that current date in the long version and time as short. This way it'll actually say AM or PM. So if it's PM, 12 PM or later, then speak the incoming text. And because this automation doesn't have any show and run or confirm, it's actually just going to speak the text out loud. Now, if I send a text message to myself, Hey, what's up? You see that automation ran and it spoke that text out loud. You'll have to finagle that current date or exactly when you want it to speak and when not, but you can totally have incoming text messages automatically spoken. This next person wanted a shortcut that would take whatever they're looking at on screen and then add it to a reminder. Now there is actually an action in shortcuts called get what's on screen. I experimented trying this in various places. The only place I could find it work was really in Safari. But if you're in Safari, it will actually run. And so I've just mapped it to my action button. I'm looking at a website right now. If I hit the action button, that shortcut will run. This is going to prompt me to title the reminder. Maybe I'll title this subscribe to Steven, which you should totally subscribe below. And it's going to create that reminder automatically with the URL that was on screen. And you'll see here the reminder was created. I titled it and there's the URL. Again, this only works for URLs as far as I can tell, but you can customize that reminder. And that's where I put the URL there from the get what's on screen action. But if you really want to get fancy, you can also get contents of URL, get the name, and then have the name as the title of the reminder. A bunch of things you can do with it. If you're more interested in get what's on screen options, let me know down in the comments and we can build more in the future. All right, and finally, number 15, this was a request from a police officer, which I have to say, I just love hearing from all these different occupations and people in different walks of life but they want to be able to automatically create an alarm for their shift, but make sure that it doesn't go off if they don't have to work the next day. Their shift starts at like 4 a.m. Now this police officer also said that all of his shifts are part of a calendar as well. So I created this shortcut where it gets all calendar events and you can choose what calendar. So I would choose your shift calendar and then choose if there's something in the next one day. This is similar to the last shortcut. So basically what you would do is create an automation that runs at 10 p.m. every day going to check your shift calendar. And if there's anything on it for the next day, if you have a shift that next day, that's the if statement. If there's anything there has any value, then we're going to create an alarm. Now, if you have to be at work at 4 a.m., I'm going to assume you have to wake up pretty early. So let's create an alarm for 3 a.m. And the next part is important. We're going to call that alarm shift. So that's actually the alarm label. 
So if that's the case, that alarm is going to be set for 3 a.m. and you're good to go. But if this shortcut checks your calendar and there is no shift, meaning there's no value, that's what's in this otherwise section, then it's going to find your alarm where the label is shift and it's going to delete it. So this way, only if there's a shift on your calendar will it create an alarm for that time. And if there's nothing on your calendar, then it's going to delete any alarm that's called shift and you can sleep in because you don't have work that day. So download this shortcut with the link down in the video description. Go over to the Automations tab, hit the plus button, choose time of day. I would do something like 10 p.m. You want this to run every day, run immediately, don't notify when run. We'll go next. We're actually going to do a new blank automation, search for the run shortcut action, and here we're going to choose that shift alarm. That's the shortcut we just created that's going to check our calendar. Let me expand that. We're good to go. And when I hit done, now it's going to check every night on that calendar whether or not I have work the next day and create that alarm if I do and delete it if I don't. Some awesome requests and a shortcut from one of you. So let me know if you have a shortcut that you'd like to show off in a future video. You can leave a comment below this video or DM me on any of the platforms. And if you have another request, a shortcut you're trying to build or need help, leave those in the comments as well. This was part eight, the eighth video I've done with just requests from you all. And it's a ton of fun. I love being able to build these. It's a challenge. And iOS 18 is going to have even more actions that opens up more possibilities. So be sure to subscribe to the channel because those will be coming up soon. Hit that like button before you go. And I'll put one of my previous shortcut videos right up here. And if you're into automations, maybe that also integrate with your smart home, I have a whole video on the smart home automations that I use. I'll put that video right up here. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.